Hey so guys, my name is Echerno. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024. Hopefully the year of very exciting stuff. We are back at it again with another code review, continuing on with the path tracer that was made by a 15 year old. This is a quick little refresher of what we've been looking at. This is a path tracer made using C++ and OpenGL. We've just started scratching the surface, so we're going to continue on with this project. And to be honest, I'm quite excited to keep looking into it. In fact, it motivated me to keep working on Hazel's path tracer during the holiday break, which I have been doing. There might be stuff to show for that soon. So my hope is looking at projects like these will also motivate you guys to maybe try something new or keep working on your projects that you keep putting off. What I want to look at today uh, with this is, and by the way, one of the things I don't like <laughs> that I'm noticing already is the mouse isn't locked when you move it around, which means that like if I want to keep spinning, like my mouse is on my other monitor now, and then eventually it's going to stop. I can't move right anymore because the mouse is not locked to the window. So it should be locked to the window. And that's that's actually really easy to do. We might take a look at that in a minute. But in fact, let's just do that right now. So escape closes the, the window, which I'm also not a huge fan of just because I am used to pressing escape quite a bit to release the mouse. I know it's not locked in this case, but it's nice that if you do have an application that you run windowed and that isn't meant to be like a full screen game, if you want to capture the mouse, meaning that moving the mouse is not gonna move it outside of the window, then you need a way to release the mouse. Otherwise you can't, like you'll have to alt tab basically or do something like that. In fact, even alt tabbing sometimes if you write your code poorly might not even help with that. Like the mouse can still be captured into the window, but you're in a different application. So it can be a little bit annoying. Anyway, point being, you need a way to release the mouse and capture the mouse. And so I'm used to pressing escape. It's just a personal problem. I'm used to pressing escape a lot because in my mind, if I'm in like a first person camera, like that was when I'm done using it and I want to click on stuff in the UI, I almost always press escape. In this case, it just closes the app. I guess that's the other kind of let's just say not very professional thing about this. If I'm like browsing this and I wanna like, let's just say load a scene, you can see as I move my mouse to load a scene, my whole viewport is changing, which is actually super annoying I might add for a path tracer specifically. Why? Because I might have the perfect shot, like it might've accumulated over like several seconds or even like a minute. And then I'm like, oh, but I want to like, I don't know, press the button to capture like a screenshot of the scene. And then as soon as I go to press the button, uh, it has to start again because that moves the camera. So let's fix that. So what we're gonna do is, uh, and by the way, I have, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, like this actually might be fun. I was gonna look at something entirely different today. I was actually gonna look at rendering. Like I've got render doc open. I was gonna take you guys through like all the rendering stuff, but this is just taking uh, on a life of its own. So we'll see how this goes. So over here in the main file, last time we talked about why it's not a great idea to put everything into the main file. I'll have the previous video linked up there. Inside the main file is where all the window stuff happens. And because all the window stuff happens over here in the main file, all of the GLFW stuff is already here. So it makes it a little bit easier for us. We can kind of treat this almost like we're not abstracting away like the old windowing system into like a different class and into our own engine API or framework API or whatever it might be. We can just use GLFW directly. As like an engine programmer, it's interesting uh, because and I'm planning to do like a little engine programming series, by the way, soon, like specifically focusing on different different systems and the stuff that I mentioned last video. But as an engine programmer, it's, it's like, <laughs> I have such an aversion to doing this stuff, like uh, not be, because it's not, it's not bad. Like in this case, obviously, obviously it's not bad at all, but I guess just because of my nature and because of what I'm used to, because of my experience, I know that like using libraries directly like that without abstracting it through your API, can sometimes be like, that, that's not my go-to strategy for really anything. And the primary reason isn't just because, oh yeah, I want my own API, because that's cool. It's more so the fact that GLFW might not always be relevant. And so if I'm putting GLFW stuff in this file, it's a problem. Now, why won't it be relevant? Well, for example, with Hazel, like we, one of the platforms that we really, really, really want to target is the Nintendo Switch that's not gonna have GLFW. That's not gonna have any anything like that. So if you have inside your like main, let's just say gameplay code, stuff that's like, oh yeah, GLFW, like capture mouse or whatever, then you'd like, you're gonna have to rewrite that anyway because you can't include GLFW headers, you can't link GLFW. And also even if you could, like, well, that's not even gonna do anything. So for that exact reason, it's like whenever I'm thinking about like, oh yeah, let's go ahead and make like, you know, clicking the mouse inside the viewport, capture the mouse. The last thing that comes to mind is me being like, you know, let's write some GLFW code right over here. But again, in this case, totally fine. 
we're only using GLFW. I'm sure this is not going to expand to a multi-platform game engine or something similar. So I think the summary really is know your context. Now, speaking of learning programming and being a better programmer, there's an excellent website out there filled with lots of really high quality courses that will teach you programming. And that is the sponsor of this video, brilliant.org. Now, brilliant.org is an amazing website filled with lots and lots of really high quality courses on various STEM topics, not just programming, but their beginner programming courses, I think personally are really good for beginners who might have trouble wrapping their head around what it means to write code, how to write code, how do I make sense of this in my head? If you're looking at all of this code and you're just not even sure how it, how the computer runs through all this stuff, how it works, then Brilliant's interactive, engaging, visual computer science courses, I think can really help you out because you'll learn about all that stuff like code flow and logic visually. And because math is really just like, well, like this with programming, it's great that all of this like visual interactive way of learning extends into Brilliant's math courses, all the way down to the very beginning with their everyday math course and all the way up to things like calculus. You can play around with widgets that control numbers to see what effect they have visually on the way that the math is working. And you'll also get quiz like every step of the way to make sure that you're actually learning and retaining this information. And did I mention that you can just try it out for free for 30 days with their 30 day free trial? I mean, honestly, that's kind of a no brainer. Just go to brilliant.org slash try it out. No downside, see if you like it. And if you do, Brilliant have been nice enough to offer the first 200 subscribers 20% off an annual membership. Huge thank you to brilliant.org as always for sponsoring this video. Okay, so we're basically, yeah, I mean, my plan here, um, this is interesting how this has turned into like a little almost tutorial, but um, because I, I swear, I swear on my life, this is not what I intended at all. But anyway, hope you guys are cool with this. We'll get back to the graphic stuff next time, probably. Yeah, let's, let's have a look at how we would do this. So there's, and the thing is, I don't know how to do this. This is the other magical thing about this. Let's take a look at this. I want to see, I know there's something about like mouse. Is it mouse cursor or cursor maybe? Set cursor. I think it might be this function over here. And I think if we look over here, it sets the cursor to be, I don't know. This is this is the actual cursor. So this isn't like the, the, the locking thing. Is it mouse? I swear it was called like set cursor mode or something like that. Mode? Set input mode. Is that it? Okay, here we go. So yes, so it is, it's called GLFW set input mode. Sets an input option for the specified window, but specifically you can see that if the mode is cursor, the value must be one of the following cursor modes, right? So this lets you set a mode and a value. So you can set an integer such as cursor to kind of pick what part you're setting. So instead of making a whole bunch of different functions, they decided to make one and use basically the parameter, the integer as like the, what are you setting to what value? So in this case, we would be setting the cursor and it can be either normal, hidden or disabled. So normal is just the, this is the state that it's in at the moment permanently. And then disabled hides and grabs the cursor providing virtual and unlimited cursor movement that's useful for implementing, for example, 3D camera controls. Perfect, right? So that's exactly what we want. So the idea is very simple. When we click on the viewport and it focuses it, then we want to set it to disabled so that it captures the mouse. And then when I hit escape, I wanna set it back to normal so that it's released. We also need to prevent escape from closing the application. You can, of course, if you really like escape closing the application, you can do a couple things. You can only close the application if the cursor mode is already normal, maybe, or you can just, I don't know, have F1 release the cursor. I don't know, you do you. Now I wanna to touch on how I found this. Um, because I think that was very natural. Like, as in, I didn't know at all where it was. I love just natural organic videos. I literally had no idea what the function was called. I knew of the function from previous experience writing it. But again, because the time of me writing this stuff in a project like Hazel would have been like five years ago. Of course, I don't remember everything that I've done in my life. And whilst I definitely could have Googled something like GLFW capture mouse, and I'm sure it would lead me to this and maybe even an example on Stack Overflow. The way that I found it in this case was I used Visual Sys, which is a paid extension for Visual Studio. So Alt Shift S, is the find symbol window, which I really love. I'm not sure if Visual Studio has its own version of something like this. Uh, I don't keep track of every new Visual Studio release and, and you know, because they're basically just slowly adding in useful Visual Assist features because they're so useful. But anyway, what's the other competing product to Visual? I think ReSharper, right? The JetBrains one, which I don't really like very much, <laughs> but that one maybe has something similar. So anyway, this isn't sponsored by Visual Assist or anything, but I do like it for this. So Alt Shift S opens up this find symbol window. This is really useful because I can type in any symbol. So functions like, defines even, which I guess aren't technically symbols, but well, actually are they symbols? I don't know, they're pre-processed a directive, I guess. Variables, like static variables and stuff like that, like global stuff, whatever symbols appear in this like entire solution, 
Um, in fact, you can limit it to entire solution versus like external dependencies and stuff like that. You can just be like, yeah, like I want just all the GLW stuff. And if you're specifically looking for like classes, structs and namespaces, you can also limit it to that. So you can see this is just showing me those GLW structs, like the image struct. So really, really, really useful when you're finding stuff. And again, this being Visual Assist, one of the things I like about Visual Assist is it's just instant. Right, like it's just like that search everything app that just searches your computer instantly once it indexes everything. This is very, very similar. And so again, if I am looking for that function, like, you know, GLW set cursor or like set mode was a set input mode. Like look how quick that is, like instantly. And that's searching everything. So it is really, truly useful. And it also, you can see the way that I've written this, if I zoom in here, really analyze Cherno's coding here. So you'll know that I'm adding spaces between words. And the reason why is because the spaces are basically acting as an and, but they're still two unique tokens. So what that means is that if I know that it contains the text, the string of text GLW in like those characters in that exact order, and it also has mode in it, but I don't know what's maybe in the middle or I don't know exactly the name of the function, then obviously if I just write GLW mode, it's gonna match that exact string. But if I separate it out, then I'm saying that I want GLW and I want mode. Both of those have to be present in that, in that symbol. And you can see how useful that is because there's GLW mode again. And as you can see, it's matching input mode, video mode, like all of these other structs. And like, these are just integers within structs as well, because the, the kind of namespace, I guess, of that variable is like contains mode in it. So anyway, I really like this. I honestly think that all searches should behave like this. And I think some of Hazel's do but not all of them. So this is a real reminder for me to revisit that. And then once I find the function, this is the great thing about libraries like GLFW that have all of their documentation inside the header files. Now it's just a matter of me just reading, just being a normal human and being able to read things and also being a little bit patient and not being like, give me the answer now. Like, let me just read some text because here's the thing guys, even if the thing that you are currently reading is not the exact answer you're looking for, I almost guarantee you will learn something along the way. So for example, like I might have only used this function for things like, you know, setting the mouse cursor. But if like the cursor was down here or whatever, maybe I would have read some other stuff during that. And I would have been like, oh, whoa, GLFW supports a raw mouse motion. Like I didn't know that, for example. So the moral of the story, if you, if you take nothing away from this video, then what I'm trying to tell you is learn to read. How are we gonna set this up? Well, we already know exactly what we're doing. Uh, let's start by disabling the escape key. So you can see the GLW key escape at the moment just breaks. So it will break from this while GLW window should close uh, while loop here, and thus will obviously terminate this application. So instead what I wanna do, and just a quick little side note, I really don't like one line if statements. I used to write them back in my Java days. I don't like them. Because first of all, I think honestly, at this point, reading them is a little bit harder because it's kind of like, I don't know, on the other hand, maybe if I was zoomed out more, it would help. But anyway, when you read things, like obviously going down like a, a decent column, a decently wide column is a lot easier to read than going across huge lines, especially if we have something like a 27 inch monitor in front of us. And so because of that, like, I feel like, you know, if this break was here, then this is just great because I'm like, if break, right? Like my eyes are focused in this area and I know exactly what's happening immediately. In fact, I don't even have to read the whole condition, right? Because check this out, escape, if key escape break. <laughs> That's all I need to read in the sentence to kind of understand what this is doing, right? I don't need the key escape last frame in the window. That's just details that I don't care about. Everything I need is here, but the break being over here, yeah, it means like it genuinely took me long to read this. Like I'm not joking. But also the other problem is breakpoints, right? So it's great if stuff is on multiple lines because it's multiple lines, right? So for example, I can make sure that I catch this condition happening. Easy, breakpoint on line two, three, one, done. If it's here, <laughs> then obviously if I put a breakpoint here, it's gonna catch this condition being checked, which in this case is every frame or like every time, you know, if I'm not adding an object or doing the save file, because I guess that opens up like a different, I'm GUI window and stuff like that. Okay, anyway, uh, so let's do this. So instead of breaking, uh, let's get escape to release mouse. So we'll do GLFW set uh, input mode. So window mode is GLFW cursor and GLFW cursor normal, right? 
So in this case, no matter what, like it will release the mouse. You could get input mode and if it's already released, I guess we can do that to keep the same behavior, but that's dangerous because sometimes I like to spam escape to just make sure the mouse is released. <laughs> and obviously in that case, this would close the application. So we might just ignore that. We'll just make escape permanently not close the application in this case. So now we're setting it to normal uh, and then we need a way to capture the mouse. Now, normally I would do that with like a click this is a little bit more complicated though, because obviously I can also click on the UI. So if I'm running this, then if I like, if I click here, I probably want to capture the mouse. But if I click here, I'm still clicking on the application, but I'm obviously, I don't want to capture the mouse because I'm interacting with the UI. So my point over here is uh, it's not just as simple as being like, if left mouse button pressed, capture cursor. That would be nice, but that's not the case. Now, as far as I can tell, it looks like the actual image is being drawn directly onto that final buffer, I think. And then the I'm GUI stuff is being drawn on top. So my point is that the viewport that we see is not an I'm GUI window that is then having an I'm GUI image put onto it like it does, for example, in Hazel. This looks like it's actually drawing directly to the buffer and then we're compositing I'm GUI on top, probably by doing this, right? Which as you can see, will render. So we're rendering the scene first, which happens over here us drawing this like full screen quad. And then on top of that, we're drawing the window. So what that means is that like the way I'd probably do this is I would check to see whether or not like we're hovering over anything inside I am GUI uh, that is like an actual I am GUI control. And if it is, then I'm not gonna capture the mouse if I click, but if I'm not, then I will capture the mouse. So I don't remember how to do that exactly. Uh, I know roughly how to do it, which is very helpful, but I don't know exactly how to do this. So we're once again gonna go on this journey and figure that out together. So there are a couple of useful I'm GUI things. I know there's like, is, well, is any item hovered is honestly probably uh, kind of what we want. The thing that I'm afraid of though, is it might not include backgrounds of windows. So an item might be something like a button or a slider or like a tab or something like that versus like, just the background of a window. But again, really easy to check because what we can do, and by the way, rather than just like printing this to the console, because we already have some UI up and running. So over here, you can see we have two strings we can search for, scene collection and FPS with a colon, right? So if I just go control shift F, for example, and I search for FPS colon, then you can see, I, I know now that it's being drawn inside my GUI.cpp. And if I double click on that, that's where I am. I'm inside the scene collection thing. So as an example, if I just do, I'm GUI, let's just do text, any item hovered, and then I might just express this as like an int or something. I can do I'm GUI is any item hovered. So that way we'll, we'll see <laughs> like if it's still one or whatever. Okay, so as suspected, you can see if I'm in the background here, any item hovered, actually says zero still, which is false. But if I hover my mouse over this button at object, it's one. So it only works for items and not backgrounds. And I don't want the click to go through if it's in the background because I'm clearly not clicking on the actual viewport, I'm clicking on this, right? So the next course of action is, uh, again, my knowledge, <laughs> unfortunately, which you guys might not have, but I'll try and make this a little bit more relatable maybe. If I didn't know what I was doing at all, maybe I would just look at this header file just to see like if there's anything useful. So sure, is item hovered may not, is any item hovered may not have worked out for me, but look at the stuff around, right? Maybe that's useful. Now get item ID, what does that do? So that gives me last item data. That's probably when I'm actually setting stuff though. So that's not what my mouse is actually actively over. Uh, what I do know though, uh, is the G I'm GUI, I think the I'm GUI context contains a whole bunch of stuff. And I don't know if all of them, like all these variables are exposed into functions. It's fine if they're not, cause we can still access the struct directly if we so choose. However, I do know that there's a bunch of stuff here. So there's hovered, there's things like hovered ID, which is a, specifically a widget, which I'm not sure if hovered ID is, yeah, so you can, so that's the hovered ID. Now I wonder if there's like, so there's hovered item. You can see there's also a hovered window inside here, right? So I'm presuming if this is like null or zero or something, then we're not hovering over anything. Now, instead of us trying to access this directly, now that we know that we can basically check, okay, if a window is hovered or an item is hovered, don't perform our left click capture 
mouse behavior. Uh, but you can see that this is inside I'm going internal, right? So we can get access to this. You have to include I'm going internal. That is something I guess I would avoid if I can, just because that's digging a layer deeper into I'm GUI and not using their kind of surface level API. But what I can do is I can just copy this, this hover window thing. And if I go back to I am GUI's CPP file, so just I'm GUI.cpp, this stuff is obviously exposed. If I just search for hovered window and I guess specifically maybe G hovered window to narrow it down a little bit, maybe I can find a function that actually returns that. Or alternatively, I can search the header file, hovered window. Okay, so hovered window doesn't seem to exist inside the, the header file. I'm not sure why they didn't make, so they've got is any item hovered. It'd be good if they also had an is any window hovered. But from their use of hovered window, you can see that they're clearly sometimes checking to see if hovered window does not equal null. So therefore, are you hovering over a window is what that kind of logically makes sense to me in English. Okay, so I just, whilst going through all this, I just found a function called is window hovered. Hovered. So I searched for hovered window inside the header file, right? This was my search string. Uh, however, it looks like hovered window is actually in a function called is window hovered, which is fine. So there is a function called is window hovered. Uh, and there's some hovered flags, which I don't know what these are. So let's take a quick look at what they could be. Okay, so here they are. So child, okay, right. So you can kind of reduce the list of like, if you're looking for like root windows, child windows, like tooltip windows or whatever. Okay, cool. So yeah, and this is for both item hovered and window hovered. Okay, great. So since that does seem to exist, and also by the way, items are inside windows. I don't know if you can have an item outside of any window. So it should be sufficient for us to just see if we're hovering over a window. So if I go back to main here, and actually before we do that, let's go back to my GUI.cpp, and I wanna change this to is window hovered, with flags being just zero by default. And then you can see that, yeah, if I'm over an item or if I'm over any part of this UI, oh, hang on. So this is actually coming up as zero. I wonder if that's just because of where I'm doing this in the frame, I'm kind of doing this in the middle of. It's probably resetting everything. So I should probably do this after I'm GUI or before I'm GUI potentially, before the frame starts. So I think that's good. I just think that I can't do it at this point in the code. So if we get rid of this and we go back to main, if we still wanted to test this out, around the time that we cared about it, which might be, well, my GUI update happens here. So let's just do it like here, for example. And if I just do, if I am GUI is window hovered, let's do like a C out window. I'll just do yes and no. And hopefully that will provide us with some good data that we wanna see. Okay, so we've got some no's happening and then, oh, we've still got no. We've still got no everywhere. Nice. Oh, this is contextual. Current window. And if it's hovered and if they're equal, probably based on some filters as well. Oh man. Yeah, that's right. This isn't, is any window hovered? Oh, there's no any window hovered, is there? Why not? That's so useful. Oh, there is. Or is there? Why is it commented out? Obsolete? Why is it obsolete? What? Why did they get rid of this function? Oh, there's, oh, cause there's, it was doing any window. Oh, is that what we want? Is that a thing? Kind of doesn't look like any window is a filter. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is, any window. Okay, so we have to use this with any window, I think. Right, wouldn't have been bad, I think, to have a function that just does that, because I feel like that's useful, but you know, whatever. Okay, so there's no, and then we got yes. Okay, so if we're over this, it's yes. If we're, and that explains why the other one didn't work. I don't, don't necessarily think it was because we did it in the wrong place. I think it's just because it was just seeing if the current window was hovered over. And obviously that only applied to this because we did that code is window hovered within this windows kind of context. Okay, so now that we have this, um, we have a way to do everything. So I would do it in probably the same place. So we can add it behind this if statement as well, since that's where escape runs. So we can just probably move, uh, you know, this up here maybe, I might do it first inside this function. And we'll just say that if, uh, I guess we can do the, the mouse button. So I don't know if there is a function for that inside this API, cause there's check key, but it doesn't really matter. I guess we can just use glfw. So if glfw get, mouse button and then we'll do window button will be glfw mouse button left uh so if that what are the states again so returns uh yeah glfw press or release so we'll just say if it's press uh then 
We also obviously need to check the I'm GUI window thing, which I may have gotten rid of. <laughs> Actually, if you do Control Shift V, here's another little pro tip. Control Shift V inside Visual Studio gives you a history of all of the stuff that you've copied, like, well, the last 10 things, I guess. So you can see that I did copy this part, but then I overwrote it, like, because I Control C'd GLW Press, but I've still got it here. So that's pretty useful. So now, uh, yeah, I can just put this in here and then I can do set input mode, copy this as well and rename it to capture mouse, and then this will be GLW cursor disabled, I think, right? Uh, and that will capture the mouse. So yeah, you can rearrange these if statements if you want, but, uh, and I'll also don't forget to flip the condition because we wanna only capture the mouse if nothing is hovered. So if mouse is not over our UI capture. Yeah, like, I don't know, is, is window hovered like generally seems like potentially more code to check compared to the mouse button being pressed. So I kind of only wanna do that if we click, not to mention that clicking is obviously not a frequent activity versus us like checking this every single frame. I imagine it would be faster to check mouse button. So that's my reasoning behind why this goes outside and this goes inside. You can also, I guess I probably would also just bring this down like that. Uh, the reason being that it's nesting less. So let's rearrange this. You can see I get to tab that over and I think that's good. Okay, cool. So I think we've now done this. So let's try and run this and see what happens. Okay, so I'm unlocked and everything. So if I click, you can see the mouse is now locked, which is great because you can see I'm spinning right and you can see I'm going infinitely. Like I cannot stop, like let me rephrase. I was gonna say I cannot stop spinning right. I can't stop spinning right, but I will not be stopped from spinning right if I go too far and run out of space on my screen because the mouse is locked. And if I hit escape, then it's gonna unlock the mouse. And if I click again, it's gonna lock it, but it, I can still click on this UI and it actually locked it. Why'd you, why are you locking the mouse? So it seems like clicking on the background, look. So clicking on an item does capture the mouse, but clicking on the background does not. So that's a little bit weird. Um, Cause I guess that would mean that I'd have to also be like, I'm GUI is any item hovered. But that would be weird because the item is inside the window. So a little strange, but there you go. So that's fixed that now. That's really weird. Again, like I feel like in most setups, cause I wouldn't have necessarily in this day and age where we're used to panels, everything being panels inside an application, I probably wouldn't have, unless I was building a game and had debug UI. If I was building like an actual application or something like this, I would have the viewport not just be the background, I'd have the viewport be like a panel. And if the viewport is a panel, then obviously in terms of I'm GUI, it's really easy to, for me to check to see if I'm hovering over that panel. And then that that's it, like this would be much easier because it would just be, is this window or like panel, am I hovering over it? Yes then capture the mouse, right, if I click. Uh, whereas here, it's it's like a method of exclusion. Instead, I have to be like, am I definitely not over any UI? So you can see I can capture it here and I can't capture it over here, which is good. And I can move this around. Now, the one thing I don't like is the camera moves even if it's not captured. So that's probably the last thing I would change. Uh, I would go into here and figure out, first of all, how the camera is being updated and just not update it if, uh, yeah, so there's, there's is mouse control situation. And then you can see it does check for update and update. So this I want to prevent if it's not captured. And the simplest way to do this is obviously just to check the input mode. And if it's not disabled, don't do it. Uh, otherwise, like again, in, in Hazel or in a, in a maybe a more complicated setup, you would probably just have like a Boolean inside the application state for is mouse captured. And then that way you don't have to like hit GLFW necessarily every time. Not, not that there, like there might not be a cost, like a significant cost with that at all, but it's still, I guess it's bad. I guess it's just like a general rule, almost an unspoken rule where you just think, of, where, where you just think that if it's your code, if you're hitting your own code, you know exactly what's happening. Whereas like if I have to run GLFW get input mode, like I don't know what that's doing behind the scenes. That might be more complicated than it seems. Now, obviously we can just look at the code and see what it's doing. Like that's easy. But if we wrote the code, we don't even have to look at it because we know what it's doing, right? So I think that's why it's, there's like a, an, a certain level of not necessarily unease, but you, you think twice when you're like, do I have to hit this third party API for this? Or do I have a Boolean that's residing in my code that just will tell me yes or no? But anyway, so let's just do and GLFW, get input mode 
window glfw cursor and we'll just make sure that that is glfw cursor disabled which again i would definitely drop this down i don't know why there are there are if statements with like multiple lines of code like that all in one line seems a bit weird but this i think would be what i would basically do now if we wanted to check out the cost um oh glfw isn't in here let me just open up hazel real quick just because that's an easy way to get access to some glfw code so if i just search for get input mode here it is then this is what it's doing right so it's a switch statement for the mode uh, and then it's just returning a variable so it's really not too bad like i wouldn't really i guess i wouldn't be like let's optimize this uh in which case i yeah i wouldn't be too worried okay sweet so now we have this um we can move these around peacefully without the camera moving all the time we can click on stuff again peacefully the emphasis here is on peace. <laughs> and then we can click and we can capture the mouse. We can move around. We can hit escape. We can go to uh, load a scene, for example. You can see that nothing's moving, which is nice. It's pleasant. If we want to move the camera. We can click on it. We might need some adjustment because I think if I click in different parts, it actually does move the camera. And I think the reason why it's doing that is because it's recording like the last position of the camera, uh, even if it's not captured. Or, well, actually, when you move it here, it'll save the last mouse position so I can calculate the delta. Then when I hit escape and click over here, it's calculating like the delta between these two positions, which is obviously huge. And that's why it's moving it. So that's another thing you could improve and I probably would. But otherwise, I think it's it's nice generally to have a scene that you can basically adjust all these settings uh, and it'd be nice if they also re... Yeah, every time you adjust a setting, it should also restart like the rendering. I think the other problem maybe that I can foresee is if you click on this and then you drag the mouse out, you can see it captures it. The mouse has actually been clicked this frame. So it's like a repeat count of zero rather than does the mouse just happen to be pressed because that's obviously different and the mouse can remain pressed when you go over the viewport and that screws everything up. So there's still a few tweaks to be made, but in general, I think this is a nice improvement. So next time what I really would like to do is actually start taking a look at the rendering code, specifically how these render passes have been organized. We'll probably open up render doc and we'll take a look at how how I would dissect the rendering of an application that I didn't write and what my approach would be to that. This is a rather simple application. Like it's nothing really stopping you from just reading the code, I think in this case, but hopefully that will be a little bit more helpful, uh, you know, for larger projects or really for any projects. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. Please let me know what you thought of this style of video where instead of just looking at the code, I went in and did some stuff. Like, is that something you want to see more of? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out brilliant.org slash the channel and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.